Hello everyone. A buddy of mine, better known as JengaFX in the community, is working on a factory field program. It's still in very much alpha development, as you can see, version 0 to 13 alpha. But let me just go through it, explain it a little bit. Uh, you can set the density of the factory field here, which basically means that how many calculations it needs, how many factor points, whatever. I'm not sure how to explain that, but okay. Uh, you can override it for now. You can go above 20, but it's still unstable, so I'm not going to go there during this video. Who knows what might happen? Maybe I'll create a black hole and... No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, then set the bounding box. Obviously, the minus of it and the plus and there. This is basically just how big the factor field will be. And this will basically uh, influence the velocity of the uh, particles it will affect. So if everything is in the plus, it will move more like in the positive directions, x plus, i plus, c plus. And in this case, it will all move in a regular direction. I'm going to generate a new vector field. I'm going to lock this to the clipboard. I already have notepad open to paste this. And I'm going to save as on the desktop as uh, Jenga FX vector field. FGA. I'm going to save it. Uh, now in Unreal Engine, I can import it. I'm going to go back to the desktop and let's find the new factor field. There we go, it's imported. Let me open the, this particle system. As you can see, there's already GPU sprites going and it actually already uses a factor field created by this tool. But let's import the new one. Uh, local factor field. Ha! Create a new one. Ha! That's funny. Okay. And create this factor field. Let me remove the geometry for now and let's see what it does. Make the screen a little bit bigger there. And I'm actually not going to tile it for now. Uh, let's make the vector scale a bit smaller there. And this is what it created. And that's actually really, really, really cool. There are all kinds of things you can still affect, of course, uh, like the intensity. If I, do, if I up the scale a lot, things will move faster. And that can also give quite a few cool results. Let's do 10,000 frequencies. We'll make it very chaotic. 200 makes it very slow. The tightness and how tight it will follow with the factor field is generated. Uh, if you lower the tightness, then as you can see, it will be way more subtle. And obviously, if you change some other settings like this, there might be additional alterations to that effect. Now, let's say I want another one. Um, let's say I want to, everything to move upwards on the Z axis. So this is X, Y, and Z. Let's move this to one as well. Uh, control click, yes, and then one. There we go. Generate new factor field. I'm gonna lock that to the clipboard again. I'm gonna save this again. Now, as you can see, at the moment it's moving like this. Let's select the factor field as well. There. And I'm going to re-import that one. As you can see, everything is now moving upwards. Quite a high velocity. So let's change those things a little bit. Let's reduce the sphere size. Maybe increase the sphere size there. And lower the intensity, maybe lower tightness a bit, go up point three should be more than low. So you see everything will just keep moving upwards until it hits the end. Now if you tile this on the z-axis it will change it a little bit of course.
There we go. But let's do a little bit more variation. So come back here and actually want to make the minus minimum strength actually a whole zero. So it's not only moving upwards, but between going upwards and just being static. I'm going to generate a new vector field. I'm going to lock this to the clipboard. And again, I'm going to paste it, save it, and re import it. Re import. There we go. And this is what it's doing now. Now, obviously, you can also rotate the vector field. It's already doing it a little bit. Let's do it a little bit faster. Let's show the vector field. Uh, where are you? There you are. As you can see, there's a vector field moving, and that's affecting the way this thing behaves. Now, let's say I want to make the vector field smaller. It creates this effect. Now, if I even just change the rotation of this a little bit on the x axis, then the movement will be different again. So you can see it's slowly rotating, and definitely see it in the dynamic vector field. And it's creating some nice turbulence. And obviously, you can keep tweaking these values until you get something you like. We just tell both, change the effect a little bit. And obviously if you change the rotation, it could be a more erratic and this is the result you will get. Okay, there will be other options between the random factor field, like toroid factor field, dynamic factor field, but those aren't working yet. Let's uh, create one more vector field. Let's do it a little bit uh, extreme. I'm going to change the maximum density to 25. Up all the axes. There we go. I'm fine with the vector field bounding box, but I want to change the, uh -huh. the velocity. So let's say I want minus, I actually want zero on this. Control click. Zero and the y axis will be zero as well. Actually, will be zero here. To the, actually, I want the z axis to be in the minus still. There, that's fine enough. I'm going to generate a new vector field, lock to the clipboard, paste it again, save it again. And let's re import the factory field. Let's disable the rotation for now. And that's the movement at the moment. Let's lower the plus T. Increase the scale a bit. And depending on the angle, it's usually can get quite some nice effects going. And obviously, if you add a bit more rotation, let's do it only on the z axis for now. This is what will happen. Now I've generated quite a few already. Um, let me just load a few weird ones. The new one. It's also generated through this. And that one I really like. Let's make the rotation rate a bit slower. Maybe change the color overlap a little bit more so you can actually clearly see what's going on. Open four, let's go to red. There we 
it's a bit chaotic, but that's so you can actually see what's going on. All right. There are a few more that I used. Um, the negative one, which is actually moving neck down the x-axis. Which was quite cool. Just a regular test. And these were all generated so quickly. And that's the really cool part so far. You can basically just, oh, I need a vector field. You generate one here. You have some uh, settings for the direction. And boom. So let's say if I want a. Mm, Something additional for a fire tornado or so. Um, I can actually control click, create, change the bounding box sizes. It should be fairly high, but it's going to start at zero actually. Minus 512, minus 512, and 1004. That's fine. I actually want these to be smaller, even. It should be more than enough. There. I want it to, to be fairly slow on the x axis, so 0 0.5, and same for y, 0 0.5. And the minimum z is 0, and the 200 z. Let's see if it generates something. Log to clipboard. Keep going again, save it. In the content browser, I'm going to re-import the one I already made and paste it here. As you can see, it's all moving upwards, which is really cool. Now let's reduce the spawn rate a little bit. Uh, let's say 50. Give it a more continuous stream. Just change the core of a light little. Let's say it's uh, some weird fire. It starts with blue, and obviously it will go to a bit of yellow. And after yellow, it will slowly start to turn fully red. There we go. As you can see, it's creating a very cool effect. Now let's up the rotation rate, like 0.5 or so. And it's creating all kinds of cool spirals going upwards. That makes me smile. Let's make it a bit faster even. And also up the intensity to 400. Moves way faster now. And yeah, it's just just makes me smile quite a lot. Let's make the rotation rate even faster. And you probably want to change the tightness a little bit. One might be a bit too much. 0.75 might still work. Maybe a bit too chaotic. And there you go. This is a really, really cool tool. Normally, these vector fields take so long to make. So, having a tool like this, especially once it's finished, will be really, really valuable. Alright, I think I've shown you enough of how this tool works and what you can do with it. And I'll link, leave a link in the description, direct you to the website, and some other information, and that should be it. Alright, take care everybody. Bye-bye.